Today I am in Disney's Hollywood Studios to eat the most expensive food in the park. This probably isn't my best financial decision. Hey guys, we are hanging out in Disney's Hollywood Studios. I'm going to be going around to a bunch of different restaurants, asking what the most expensive thing is on the menu and trying it out. And I think you guys are gonna be pretty shocked at some of these prices. Let's kick this thing off at ABC Commissary. Before we take a look over the menu, I do wanna mention that if you guys are purchasing the Disney dining plan for your vacation, this video is probably going to be pretty helpful. I don't know about you guys, but I am all about maxing out the value of things. And if I was purchasing the Disney dining plan, I would definitely wanna make sure I did that. And the best way to do so is by ordering the most expensive things that you can. So if you're getting the Disney dining plan, this video is for you. If you want some shock value, this video is for you. Or if you want to make poor financial decisions like myself, um, this video is also for you. So let's take a look over the menu here at ABC Commissary. This is definitely one of the more popular locations for dining. Um, we have our entrees here. There's some shrimp tacos, a chicken club sandwich, the Mediterranean salad, which I can tell you is very good. The buffalo chicken grilled cheese is very popular, but these, none of these are the most expensive thing on the menu. This one is really going to shock you. The most expensive thing is the plant-based California burger coming in at $13.29. I was definitely very surprised to find out the most expensive thing here at ABC Commissary is actually a plant-based item. You would probably think it would be like the shrimp tacos or the buffalo chicken grilled cheese. Nope, just a plant-based patty on a bun with some toppings. It's gonna be the most expensive thing here. Is it worth the $13.29? Let's find out. Here it is, the California Burger. This is a seared farm fresh plant-based burger with sriracha mustard and balsamic glazed grilled peppers and onions with a mayo ketchup blend, lettuce and tomato served with a choice of a side for $13.29. I feel like this has the potential to be really, really good with the balsamic glazed peppers and onions and the sriracha mustard. However, it definitely does not look the best. Let's be real here. This looks like some boiled beef, but try it out, give it a shot. I cannot believe I just wasted $13 on this. There is no balsamic flavor from the onions or peppers whatsoever. I'm pretty sure the mustard is not actually sriracha mustard and it's just straight up yellow mustard. But let's be real, the worst part is this burger patty. And I am one to actually really enjoy plant-based meats, um, plant-based sausage, plant-based burgers. I do enjoy plant-based food quite a bit. This is, this is not it. This burger patty tastes like cardboard. E even worse than, oh, oh my God, it has such a bad taste. I, I definitely didn't expect it to be this bad, especially for being the most expensive thing on the menu. Oh, vegans, I am sorry they had to do it to you. Around the corner at Pizza Rizzo, they have a plant-based Italian sausage and pepper sandwich that is delicious. And I know I say it in like every video at Hollywood Studios, but it's truly one of my favorite things to eat in the park, even though it's plant-based and I am not. But this, this is a total skip. I, I, I would not recommend this. Go around the corner if you're looking for something plant-based and get that impossible sausage and pepper sandwich. Hopefully the fries are good. Better than the burger. They're a little soggy, but... Ooh. Definitely better than the burger. The more that I think about it, the more I'm also surprised that they're calling it a California burger, but it doesn't have, like, avocado or something on it. Like, what makes that California? But next, we have made our way over to the Backlot Express for our next most expensive thing in Hollywood Studios. And it is such a busy day in Hollywood Studios that the line for the Indiana Jones stunt show actually wraps around in front of Backlot Express. Look, that's where it starts. And that's only for standing room. They are, they are full. The seats are full for the show. Um, standing room only. It is so busy here. Oh, my gosh. Let's head inside Backlot. Backlot Express is my go-to place in Hollywood Studios if I'm looking for some chicken tendies. I also really enjoy the Cuban sandwich from here. We're not getting that today. Today we are getting a 
burger, another burger that is over $15 from a quick service restaurant. This is the smoked barbecue pulled pork burger. It's a one third Angus beef burger topped with slow smoked pulled pork, American cheese, coleslaw, crispy onions, and house made sweet and tangy barbecue sauce for $15.29. And let me tell you, this burger is definitely not for the week. Not only does it look a lot better than the last burger we had, this thing is loaded with pulled pork. There is so much meat on this thing. There is no way anyone could eat this by themselves. But today we attempt to do so. See how it is? This thing is, wow, this is actually pretty good. It's very salty, I will say that. But call me crazy. I happen to really enjoy the quick service burger patties that they serve across property. I think they're pretty good. And this one itself has a really nice char on there. That's a really nice charred flavor. The pulled pork itself is sweet and tender. Then they add a bit of extra sauce on the bottom of that bun. Good sweetness from that. I like the crunch of the onion straw as well. I wish there was honestly like more onion straws. And I'm sorry I got this without the coleslaw because I don't eat mayo. Um, so I imagine with the coleslaw would be even better, but without, honestly, this is pretty good. Is it worth the over $16 that I paid for it after tax? I don't know about that, but we're definitely improving since the California burger that we had first. If you're looking for a meal that will absolutely stuff you or is big enough to share for two people, come get this. It's essentially like two meals in one because you've got the burger and then you've also got the pulled pork. Now this usually comes with fries, but I substituted that for some apple slices because I didn't want to just be eating fries all day. And I decided to take the healthy route. I'm trying to eat a little healthier, guys. So um, I went with apples, but this usually comes with fries. Um, and yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily great, but it's definitely a good value if you're on the dining plan too. Well, on the way to our next stop, we were passing by Muppets Courtyard where they have a gelato cart, which I have actually never gotten anything from because I think it is very, very overpriced. But on a day where I'm trying to get the most expensive stuff on the park, that is perfect. So I walked by, knew I had to stop. Now this gelato cart is actually creating quite the buzz because they have a Pog flavored gelato. Pog is a very popular breakfast juice that they serve here in Disney World. It's passion orange guava juice. Like I said, very popular. Any, any restaurant you go to for breakfast at Disney World, you can pretty much always find it and it is so good. So I imagine in gelato form, it would be really good as well. But like I said, that price has always steered me away, but not today. I have picked up my Pog gelato and a Pog ordering I was shocked to find out that you could actually increase the price of a single scoop from seven dollars and fifty cents and add an extra dollar and seventy five cents on if you wanted your ice cream in a cone. Um, I refuse to pay a dollar fifty extra on top of an already ridiculously priced scoop of gelato so just got just got the cup. Let's see if the hype is real. Wow. The hype is real. Mm hmm The hype is definitely real with this. This is so good. I expected it to be like more icy than it is, but it's very, very creamy. You get those really fruity flavors. This is delicious. This might be one of the best snacks that you could get in Hollywood Studios. Is it Ridiculously priced, 100%. Is it delicious? Also 100%. I don't know. On a good treat yourself day, I might get this again. I don't know if I'm necessarily tasting like pog juice in this gelato. I taste more of like a fruity bubble gum type flavor, which is weird because I don't usually like bubble gum flavored anything. Um, but this, this is a different story. This is delicious. My mother would love this and I know she's watching. So mom, when you're here next week, you have to get this. While I am back here in the land of the Muppet, I did want to take a second to tell you about my Rainbow Connection tea from Shop LBV. If you guys are big Muppet fans like myself, make sure you head to the link in the description of this video. Shop LBV has some amazing Muppet tees, not limited to just this Rainbow Connection one that I'm wearing. There's an Animal Was Here one, a good Sam Eagle one. There's literally, there's so many. Um, so make sure you head to the link in my description to shop for them. And another thing I want to do while I am back here by Mama Melrose is let you guys know that Mama Melrose actually got a brand new menu. I believe 
believe this week. It just debuted a couple of days ago. They have a bunch of new stuff like Barada. They have brand new mozzarella sticks, a couple other new apps, new entrees, new pizzas that look really good and that I hear are really good, new desserts. They've got a bunch of new stuff. I'll actually be back here in Hollywood Studios tomorrow filming a video for you guys on the brand new menu at Mama Melrose. Now, I am like the biggest Mama Melrose hater. I personally think it is the worst restaurant in all of Disney World. But we'll see if this new menu can kind of like take that title away from it. So keep an eye out for that video coming very soon. All right, well now let's head into Galaxy's Edge where we are bound to be met with probably the most expensive thing, the best value thing that you can get if you're on the dining plan in this park. And as I'm walking in, I'm very curious to see what the wait time for Rise of the Resistance is gonna be. This is probably gonna be the longest wait in the park right now. The park is so busy. So I expect this wait time to be upwards of two hours for sure. The wait time is currently not listed on the sign outside, so I checked my phone to see the wait time and it's not listed either. It says it's temporarily closed, which I don't think it is because I see people from standby walking in. The line for Lightning Lane is crazy, but people are still walking in. So I have a feeling they just haven't like updated it yet, but I'm gonna check back in like a minute and see if it has updated on the app and see what it is because even the lightning lane line is out of the queue. All right, it looks like it is updated and the app is only saying 60 minutes, which I I do not buy unless the queue is completely empty and they're just letting everyone into the queue now because that line was crazy. And from what I understand, Rise has been down for like most of the day. So I feel like as soon as everyone sees that it's back up, everyone's gonna rush over there and uh, the line is just gonna shoot right up and be super long. But we have made it to Docking Bay 7 where we are going to get our next very, very expensive food. Docking Bay 7 is the quick service location here in Galaxy's Edge and arguably the best spot to come if you're on the Disney dining plan. They have some of the most expensive entrees that you will find at any quick service across Disney property. They have one that even costs over $20 after tax, which is the one that I got. Of course, I am talking about the Batuan Beef and Crispy Topato Stir Fry for $18. 99. Now this has a smoky braised beef glazed in tamarind sauce and it's served with stir fried mushrooms, veggies, crispy herb, yuca, pickled onions, and cilantro. Now I did get this dish not too long ago as it comes with all of the sides. So I decided to switch it up a bit this time and change up the sides. You could change it for rice and veggies or mac and cheese and veggies, which is what I decided to do today. This time around, I definitely feel like I got more beef than last time. Let's go in for this mac and cheese. Nothing special, I just love mac and cheese. It used to be so good here though. They used to have um, little tiny circle pasta and now they use this like bigger noodle. It's not as good, but so it's mac and cheese. How bad can it really be? But now for this beef, which I remember really enjoying this time. Again, it looks like it has that really nice glaze on there. This beef is so flavorful. It has a really good kick today actually, wow. I'm like kind of feeling it in my nose and the back of my throat. It's a good kick though. I really like spicy food. Um, it, it's also a little sweet with that like kind of tamarind glaze that they have on here. The meat is very tender. And like I said, there is absolutely no lack of flavor on this. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, last time I got this dish, I got it with the yuca and really enjoyed the yuca as well. It was a really good piece of yuca, um, but I'm not missing it with the mac and cheese and broccoli. You know, I love mac and cheese and broccoli. Who on here remembers when they had a pot roast mac and cheese over at Friars Nook in the Magic Kingdom? I remember like coming as a kid and getting that every single time. I absolutely loved it. This is kind of giving that, like the, the like tender beef pulling apart there in the mac and cheese is kind of giving old Friars Nook pot roast mac and cheese. They used to have some incredible loaded mac and cheeses there. It's not the same as it is now. The mac and cheese was far better back in the day. Let me know in the comments if you guys remember that because I feel like I'm the only one that it was like one of my favorite foods. Overall, like I mentioned, Docking Bay 7 is a fantastic place to come if you're on the dining plan. Um, also a great place to come if you're looking for like a dinner or just a meal that isn't just going to be like burgers or sandwiches and fries here in Hollywood Studios because there is surely a lot of that. This is where you're going to find more of like the unique dishes, kind of like a more well-rounded dinner. I want to show you guys the rest of the menu to see what else you could get here that's on the pricier side. So we have our Batuan beef. They also have a pokey bowl, which is a very good value as well. Only 50 cents cheaper than the beef, 18.49. So great value on the dining plan. 
They also have smoked pork ribs, which are about 17 bucks. So again, great value. The chicken tip yip, over 16. The hot chicken tip yip, a salad. Yeah, some really great options if you're on the dining plan for pricey meals to get that value. It's definitely so hard to break even on the dining plan. And if you guys are asking me if the dining plan is worth it, I would probably say no. You would really have to do the math and make sure you're like, eating that amount per day. Otherwise it is totally not worth it. And also is it like worth the stress of kind of planning what you're gonna eat beforehand opposed to like what you actually want in the moment? Probably not. Um, like I said, I hope to do like a Disney dining plan kind of is it worth it or how to make the most of your dining plan video sometime in the near future. Um, I feel like that would help a lot of people come in here. Well, I, I get asked all the time whether the dining plan is worth it. And to keep the answer short, no. But if I was on the dining plan and in Hollywood Studios, I would definitely make sure to get my quick service from here at Docking Bay 7. The characters are really out and about here today in Galaxy's Edge. I saw Chewbacca over by the Falcon. I also saw Rey walking around, the Stormtroopers, Kylo Ren. They are all out hanging out with all the guests. But now it is time to make our way into Toy Story Land for one of the most popular spots to eat here in Hollywood Studios. And uh, we're gonna get the most expensive thing at Woody's Lunchbox. The menu here at Woody's Lunchbox mainly consists of sandwiches. Um, they also have lunchbox tarts, which are popular, as well as the tachos, which are tater tot nachos. I did manage to snag the most expensive thing on the menu, which is a brisket grilled cheese, but nothing here is like particularly a great value on the dining plan. Everything is for the most part under like $13. So nothing too great here on the dining plan, but we did get this brisket grilled cheese, so we're gonna try it out. For $13.29, you could get the barbecue brisket melt. This has shredded smoked brisket, pickles, and tangy barbecue sauce between melted cheddar and Monterey Jack on grilled sourdough bread. Now, I do have to let you guys know, this used to be my favorite thing to eat in this park, or one of my favorites at least. But the last time I got it, which was at this point probably like over three years ago, which is crazy, um, I had the fattiest piece of brisket in my sandwich that um, did not sit well. Um, it really just was not good that last time I had it, and I have not had it since that time. And this time it looks like it's changed a little bit. I know the brisket used to be like sliced. Now it looks like it's pulled. So this, this, this should be a lot better than the last time I had it. All right, let's hope we don't have a repeat of last time. I don't think we will. I think this has maybe like a little bit too much sauce on that brisket for me. But other than that, this is really good. The bread is nice and toasted, the sourdough there, plenty of cheese. The brisket is tasty and pulled this time around. But like I said, maybe just like a little bit too much sauce on there. I have upgraded from a standing table behind me to a table with chairs here. And it's really funny because literally as soon as I sat down, people came over like vultures trying to take my chairs. I had like seven chairs around this table and I am now down to two, the one I'm sitting in and the empty one right next to me. It's so funny though, I had like three different people come over and be like, oh, are you using these chairs? And I'm like, no, no. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Woody's Lunchbox definitely needs more tables and chairs. From uh, my observations and what I've read, I believe they are like building another seating area kind of right next to the restaurant. So hopefully that opens up soon or they get more chairs around their tables because they're definitely needed. And before I went to take my second bite, I noticed that there's also pickles in here. I forgot, I know I read them in the description, but I forgot they were in here. So I wanna get a bite from the back corner where that pickle is. I think that might be the only one that I'm seeing. Pickles make everything better. Those pickles on this sandwich are fantastic. I wish there was honestly like more of them because if you get that pickle in every bite, it's really a great bite. That was the only one on this half of the sandwich. We'll see if the other half has another one. I hope they're not just putting like one pickle. Yeah, they are. They're just putting one pickle on each half of the sandwich. We need more pickles at Woody's Lunchbox. I wonder if you could like ask for extra. Probably not because I think these are like pre-made and kind of just sitting back there. But when you get a bite with that pickle, it's really good. Without the pickle, it's good, not the best. Um, so more pickles. Also still, even though it's like $13.29, it's still not the greatest of values on the dining plan. I believe this is like the cheapest like entree that we've had today. Um, but if you wanted to get it, still the most expensive here at Woody's. Another little thing that's unique about Woody's lunchbox is instead of fries with your sandwich, you could get tater tots. And they're good tater tots too. I believe you could also get like a cuties um, orange or 
tomato soup. But tater tots are fun and definitely a more fun option than just the usual fries that everything comes with. I'm finishing up my sandwich and I'm nervous to get up from this table because I feel like as soon as I stand up, there's going to be like five families running over to me trying to get this table and then I'm just going to get flustered and not know what to do and they're going to look at me like I should tell them who could take the table when in reality I don't care who takes the table. This is like a stressful thing. This is something that stresses me out that probably shouldn't but all right I'm going to do it. I'm going to get up. Well what I thought would happen was actually worse. As soon as I like leaned towards the side of my chair to stand up a man in an ECV leaned over and almost dove out of his ECV to put his cane on the table to reserve it. <laughs> what a day in Hollywood Studios. In case anyone wants to ride Slinky Dog Dash, the line is all the way back here. 150 minutes, which reminds me, I want to look at the wait time for Rise and see if it's gone up. If Slinky is 150, I'm sure Rise is around the same. Yep, 155 minutes for Rise. That is... Whew, that is too much for me. Well, with all these long wait times, I think that is my cue to head out, and I know my wallet will thank me for doing so. Massive shout out to all of my Patreon subscribers, Angela, Ashley, Barbara, the Calcanes family, Catherine, Lindsay, Misty, Shelby, Adam and Jen, Anne, Brittany, Karis, Chelsea, Carol, Daniela, Marcel, Dante, Dustin and Nancy, Emily, Ethan, John Paul, Christina, Leah, Tori, Lisa, the Martell family, Michael Pickle, the Latham Thomas family, Tracy, Wayne, Jermaine, Eric, the Weaver family, Stephen, Andrea, Jessica, the Leibowitz family, Abigail and Robin, Jamie and Andrew, and Diane. And thank all of you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. I appreciate you all watching. Make sure you give this video a like subscribe to me all those things and hopefully this video was able to help some of you guys out who maybe purchased a dining plan and are looking for those expensive things to get and with that i shall see you guys next time bye